Hi there, and welcome to this video about upgrading from the SharePoint client-side object model to the PMP libraries to improve the quality of your life and of your development. Just to set the context, the client-side object model, or CSOM, is the library provided by Microsoft to access from a client platform a target SharePoint environment. It used to be based on .NET framework only and to target SharePoint on-premises and SharePoint online. Nowadays, we still have an old CSOM library for SharePoint on-premises, which targets .NET framework only. And we also have a new one, which is now cross-platform, which supports .NET Standard 2.0 and .NET 5, 6 and 7, which target SharePoint online only. With the uh, client-side object model of SharePoint, uh, we have uh, a library that somehow mimics the behavior of the server SharePoint object model of SharePoint, uh, but consuming it from the client side. Moreover, the uh, CISOM library requires a good knowledge of SharePoint and how SharePoint works under the cover in order to be able to properly use it to consume SharePoint content. And let me say that the CISOM library are deeply used in the uh, classic uh, SharePoint add-in model, but are not uh, really good options if you want to create uh, a modern solution. That's why we are talking about a set of libraries provided by the Microsoft 365 and Power Platform community, also known as PMP, Parallel Practices uh, Community for Microsoft 365. And this group of libraries is made of PMP Framework, which is, uh, again, a library that targets multiple platforms, so cross platform You can develop uh, using it in .NET Standard 2.0 or .NET 5, 6 or 7. It targets SharePoint Online only, and it extends the CISOM library, providing a rich set of extension methods, which will make your life easier and your development faster. It also includes the PMP provisioning engine, which is a really famous engine that you can use to extract a template from a live site and reuse the same template to create and provision many more sites based on that initial template. So, really useful whenever you want to replicate the same information architecture across multiple site collections and our tenants and customers. Then we also have the PMP Core SDK, which still targets .NET Standard 2.0 and .NET 5, 6 and 7. It is still cross-platform then, and it is still SharePoint Online only. But the main difference between PMP Framework and PMP Core SDK is that in PMP Core SDK, we implemented a fully modern development approach based on dependency injection, asynchronous code development. Internally, PMP Core SDK relies on Microsoft Graph in order to have a graph-first approach meaning that whenever you will consume SharePoint or any other Microsoft 365 workloads, we will give priority to Microsoft Graph and we will try to use Microsoft Graph for you. And if you are going to use something which is not yet available in Microsoft Graph, we will fall back to the SharePoint REST APIs. So it is fully disconnected from CISOM and it relies only on REST and open authorization. So fully modern, faster and better organized for modern solutions. So let me move to the demo environment and let me show you how to transition from the old season experience to PMP framework and PMP core SDK. So here we have uh, a classic solution built uh, with the client side object model of SharePoint. As you can see in the packages, we have micro.sharepointonline.season as well as uh, we use micro.identity.client to use the modern authentication with CISOM. In fact, here we create a client context object based on the URL of a target site. And on executing web request for that context, we get the access token from an acquire token async function defined right here, which relies on MSAL and the public client application builder to get an actual access token for the currently connected user with an interactive login. As such, we can use CISOM with modern authentication. 
application. But then, once we have the context, we can easily play with the context and CSOM to get the web object and the ID and the title of the web object. We can show them on the console. We can get a list by title, and the list will be the document, uh, document library. And we can show the information about that document library, as well as we can make a query for the top 10 items, so the top 10 documents in the target document library, and we can show all of them. So, if we execute this application just for the sake of it, we can see that in the console window we have the application running and we have to authenticate using the interactive login and I will use this account which is targeting my tenant. I will have to provide my credentials and once I've done that I will see that I can get the list of items in the document library and that's it. Now, let's say that we want to do the same with uh, the PMP framework library so that you can see how it is uh, easier to do that using the PMP framework instead of using just native uh, CSOM. And for the sake of uh, completeness, I've built another example which uses exactly the same uh, core functionalities but relying on PMP framework. So first of all, instead of having to implement yourself the modern authentication logic, you can simply reference in the packages the PMP framework package. That one will include a reference to CISOM and MSIL. So here you simply need to use the authentication manager type provided by PMP framework to get a create with interactive login method providing the client ID, the tenant ID and the redirect URL of the site or actually of the authentication. You will get back an authentication manager which will allow you to do the get context async providing the URL of the site and getting back a client context of CISOM. So rather than having to implement all of the uh, modern authentication logic, you simply rely on the authentication manager of uh, PMP framework. Once you've done that, you can still use CISOM as like as you are used to do. But for example, here again, you can uh, play with the uh, CISOM library using the extension methods provided by PMP framework. So for example, here on the web, you can simply say get list by title and you will provide the title and you will specify the properties that you want to load. So you have a shorter syntax and easier to write syntax. And the result will be still to get the document library ID and title with just one request. Then you can get all of the items and browse through all of them. If we execute this uh, console application again, just for the sake of completeness, you will see that you have again to authenticate using interactive login and so I will have to provide my credentials one more time and once I'm authenticated in the console application I can see that I have the documents in the document library. Simple as that. Now let's see that we want to make one more step and we want to use the PMP core SDK. So let me switch to another demo and this time I'm going to show you how you can leverage the modern development technique of PMP core SDK. Again, in the dependencies, in the packages, you have to reference the pmp.core.auth, which implicitly will also reference the pmp.core uh, package, and as such, you will have both the authentication and uh, the actual and real PMP core SDK library. I also have a reference here to the micro.extensions.hosting because in the PMP Core SDK we created it with dependency injection in mind. So here we configure a host and we uh, create a, a default builder for the host and we configure the services that we will inject through dependency injection. And specifically we have the services.rpmp core which is an extension method provided by the PMP Core library which will register all of the services needed by PMP Core SDK to properly do what you need to do. Then we also configure the settings of PMP Core SDK through a specific type PMP Core options and we say that we want to read the settings from the default settings provider which will be an app settings.json file in this solution. As such, we have a PMP core section where we can define the default authentication method which will be called interactive and which will use the interactive authentication mode. And the site that we want to use will be just one called, this is just an internal name for our own reference, site to work with and this is the URL of the site that I'm going to consume. So that 
Once I have properly configured also the authentication part of PMP Core and the settings of the authentication, we can simply say, OK, start asynchronously the host. And in the host, we get a scope. So uh, as such, we can then get a reference to the service that we need. Specifically, we get a reference to the IPMP context factory implementation. This will be a service which will give us a PMP context object, which is a new object specific of PMP Core SDK through which we can access a target site collection, a target team, and generally speaking, our target environment. In fact, through the PMP context factory object instance that we get from the service provider, we can simply say create asynchronously a PMP context for what? For the site that we called, we defined site to work with, meaning this one defined in our settings. Once you have done that in this context object, you will have an instance of a PMP context type, as you can see right here. And through the PMP context, you can leverage the fully asynchronous and modern development technique that we provide. And you can, for example, asynchronously get the web associated with the current context and retrieve the title and all of the lists in that site and eventually also the master page URL. This is just for the sake of showing you that we can make multiple requests at once. Then we show that information. We get the list of lists that we requested before, so right here, and we browse through all of the lists. And eventually we can also play with the team settings associated with the team that is backing our SharePoint site. Something completely new that you were not able to do with CISOM or with the PMP framework library. And for example, here we'll read in the team what the set fun settings are just to show if we allow Giphy or not. But we can also play with language integrated query. And we can make, for example, a query in the context.web.lists. This is a collection of lists. We can make a link query to get all of the list of type document library. And then we can browse the list and see the output. So really modern, new and powerful syntax available for you. Let me execute this sample as well, just for the sake of completeness. And this is the console application again. Here I have to authenticate interactively, like always. Let me provide my credentials for this uh, target tenant. And now that I'm authenticated, you can see here in the console that I can get the whole list of lists in my site, as well as I can get just those of type document library using the link query. And under the cover in this demo, you can see also the requests that are made by the uh, PMP Core SDK. There could be graph requests or SharePoint REST API requests, depending on what you want to get back from your target environment. Last but not least, I just want to show you that you can also use both PMP Framework and PMP Core SDK together and you can switch from one to the other. So, for example, here we have, as like as before, the dependency injection and the host configured. We also have some settings for the PMP framework. And here, for example, using PMP framework and using the authentication manager that we have just seen before in the previous demo, we can get a season context. But if you need to transition from the PMP framework to the PMP Core SDK, using a specific type called PMP Core SDK dot instance and using the get PMP context method, you can transform the season context into a PMP context. And from there, you can start playing with PMP Core SDK or the other way around. So if you have a PMP context of PMP Core SDK and suddenly you need to switch to a PMP framework uh, a set of uh, objects, including the season client context, well, you can still use PMP Core SDK dot instance dot get client context from the PMP context, and you will get back a season client context that you can use from there on. So you can use both of them in your solutions depending on what you need to do. Here you can find additional links if you want to dig into the topics that we covered in this video. And like always, thank you for watching. Thank you.